Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nina and this is A Really Good Life. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how I prepare for my NDIS plan review meeting, which is coming up in about four weeks time. Now, before I start talking about that, let's address the elephant in the room, the fact that my speech is a little bit different than what you're used to. So I'm actively in a MS exacerbation phase or MS relapse as some people call it and that's affected my speech so for the last uh, couple of weeks like last week I was pretty much at home bed bound housebound and the fatigue was so bad that I was asleep for about 16 hours a day it's getting it's like I can feel that fog sort of lifting but my speech is very bad maybe I'll talk a little bit more about that later but right now I'm going to um, take these guys for a walk this is my Ibisan hound Dante and then along the way throughout the next couple of days I'm going to be telling you all my tips and tricks about how to get prepared for your NDIS plan review meeting but also bear in mind that this is my opinions and every plan is individualized and I have a neurological disability. So if you take all that into consideration, these are my words and my thoughts alone. Better get these guys walked. Talk later. Hello everyone and welcome back. It's Sunday afternoon now and welcome to episode one of Hot Stuff cooking with Nini. So tonight I was going to show you I'm cooking American chicken and roasted veggies with chipolato mayonnaise. Yeah. Now part of the reason why I like HelloFresh, hashtag not sponsored, is that it gives, even in, even in the midst of a relapse of MS like I am now, it gives you six easy steps to follow, pictorial and written instructions. So you can't go wrong, literally, you can't go wrong. You just follow step one through to six and even I can manage that. So I've got all my ingredients over here and I'm just going to show you what they are. I've got baby spinach leaves. I've got chicken breast, nothing like a bit of breast on a Sunday, is there? I've got my sweet corn kernels, that's a tiny tin. Mayonnaise, one red onion, pre-chopped peeled pumpkin, red capsicum, and a whopping big zucchini. Oh. And to spice up your life just that little bit more, we've got the all-American spice blend. So while I'm going to chop all this up and get into the groove, of cooking with Nini, I'm going to have a little chat to you also about all things NDIS. So, ladies and gentlemen, pull up a chair and get ready for hot stuff. All right, so I've got the oven preheating to 200 degrees Celsius. Bingo. Step one, slice the red onion into two centimeter wedges. Got my disability friendly, MS friendly knife. Perfect, and we're gonna chop this baby up. Now, before I even start that, I was gonna say to you, whoa, what's that? Oh, that was an ant, I think. Woohoo! I was gonna say to you that part of the, um, all right, so as part of the NDIS review process, Part of that to me, the most important part, is actually looking back and reflecting, engaging in that self-reflection process and thinking to myself, what worked? What didn't work as well? What would I like to change? What kind of things do I really want to achieve next time? For instance, say if you had someone coming into your home and doing meal prep for four hours per week, say on a Friday, and then that freed you up to have the energy to go to the gym twice a week. So as a result, you're actually fitter and stronger than you were 12 months prior. 
I think that's a really good outcome that the NDIS would want to know. Um, so that, that's the first process I go through is sitting down and really thinking about what do I need? What supports do I need? What equipment do I need? Where am I at? What, what am I trying to achieve in the next 12 months or two years if your plan lasts that long? So just being really honest with myself and not looking around at other people and going, oh, they're doing better than me or they got more. It's all about the individual. So having that accountability. Did my life improve as a result of my NDIS funded supports or didn't it? And if it didn't, what needs to change? But if it didn't, it worked really well. Kudos to you. Let's build on that. All right, I've got to chop the zucchini up into two centimetre chunks. Does anybody ever know what a two centimetre chunk is? I mean, like, do you get a ruler out and measure it? I don't know. Right. So the next step is we're actually going to start prepping the chicken. While my vegetables are roasting in the oven, I'm going to place my hand flat on top of the chicken breast and slice it like this in half oh my god is that working yes it is not exactly a hundred percent even but we're doing it and i thought i'd tell you that speaking on a personal level i'll tell you a couple of things that really worked well for me in my last ndis plan so i would say that hands down i thoroughly enjoyed my social and community access program, which was Bus Stop Films. Um, that went for an entire year, so I'm definitely going to ask for funding for that to be included for the second year program. Um, the other thing would be therapies. So my gym physio program, um, it made such an absolute difference to the quality of my life, being able to train, you know, twice a week with a neuro-trained physio. Hang on a tick. I've got to drizzle my chicken with olive oil. So, um, the other thing too would be... Ooh, having access to those kinds of supports that just make a huge difference so that I can be able to go to work every day. Um, things like a linen service, things like meal prep or even a meal service like i've been using you foods and just everything really i mean there's nothing that i haven't used that's been beneficial i've had a fantastic run with ndis and i plan on building on that success into my third year now hang on a tick i've just got to mix up the spices next step which i've already just done off camera I've chopped the chicken breast in, drizzled it with oil, salt, pepper, and then I opened up the spicy, spicy All-American blend and I managed to just puff it all over myself. So I had to go and shake that all off. And I'm just going to massage it lightly into my chicken, turn it all over, make sure it's on each side. Oh, this is looking good. Got to say, got to say it's looking good. There we go, a bit more oil to hold that on. We'll swap that one over there. Okay, I'm just gonna put this to one side now. And the next step is we're gonna char the sweet corn. Have to get my fry pan out for that one. But there you go. That is the chicken done and dusted. Step four, make the chipolata mayonnaise. So while your corn is cooking, and that's already on the go. Pop your chipolata sauce in a bowl, just like this. And then we're gonna combine it with the mayonnaise. Oh, that smells really spicy. So how's everyone been lately? I know I haven't been all that great, but how is everyone else? Let me know in the comments box below. And don't forget that you can follow me on Instagram. It's at a really good life. At, I'll put the link down below. And I've got a Facebook group. It's a really good life. So if you want to see more of me, you know where to find me. All right. And then we just stir that up. Oh, look at that. That's looking good.
All right, I'd say that was done. Next step we're going to do is cook the chicken. We're just going to put the chicken in the pan. Pan's already been preheated. Right, you can see that angle. And that's three to five minutes on either side. I'll just bring the camera up so you can see. Oh, this is looking good, trick looking good. I'm a triple threat. I'm really smart. I'm hot. And I can cook. What more do you want? So there you go. That's the finished product. Doesn't that look just so totally delicious? I'm going to have to get my lips around that. Woo, yeah. Good morning. Happy hump day, people. It's Wednesday. So I'm here on the banks of Lake Illawarra. I'm just getting out of the house for a couple of hours. As you can hear, my voice is still very much slurred, so I'm in an active relapse stage of my primary progressive MS. But overall, I'm doing okay. Life could be a lot worse, you get what I'm saying? So I thought I'd just have a little chat about one thing I want to tell you also about getting ready for your NDIS plan review meeting is one thing I do is I get a seven day calendar and I do so I put in what I do across those seven days so Monday might be you know going to uni Tuesday to Friday is going to work Saturday is social Sunday is devoted to yoga and, phys and physical activity and stuff like that. So then I put in all my targets of where I need the support. So two hours here, two there, two there, two there, two there. And I accrue an hourly rate to that and then I put it in. Now I do three calendars, one for when I'm high functioning. So one for when I'm not in a relapse, I'm just like living a normal average life. And then I do another one for increased supports for when I'm in relapse stage or my health is otherwise affected, a downturn. And then I do a third one, so that is when I'm away, like if I'm traveling, what sort of supports would I need then? So always do that. My second thing is I would say that a participant statement is really important. So if the planner, um, doesn't have a really good idea of who you are as a person it's just going to be a lot harder so what I do is I write at least an A4 to two A4 pages about what I do and, and who I am and how I live and all that kind of stuff but I also read that out to them before we start doing the planning meeting I also include a photo album of all the things that I've done during the year and how I link each of those photos back to a goal and the outcomes and what I've achieved because NDIS is evidence-based scheme. Trust me on this. Evidence counts. So, there we go. I've got me photos. I've got me participant statement. What else do I need? That's a good start. Um... We'll talk a little bit more about this later, but, oh, before you go, I've been op shopping too. I'm going to show you what I've got, just because you care, you know. So I went and I got this gorgeous top. Oh my God, it's like a captain thing for a brand called Curvy. $5 in the op shop. I mean, blow me away, Sally, look at that. You'll be able to see me from Mars wearing this. And then the second thing I got was, this was $3.50. It's like a, it's also like a full length caftan from a brand called Curvy Connection. And that is, I mean, look at that. Seriously, how beautiful is that? So in summer, I'm going to pair that with a cinched belt, some lovely sandals and my rockin' cowboy hat. And there you go, who's a sexy girl? Me! 
Alrighty, I'm gonna just drop my chair down now. Might go and get myself some fish and chips, so I'll talk to you a little bit later. See ya. Good morning everyone, it's Thursday now and I'm just rolling along through the streets of my suburb. I actually just had an appointment with my occupational therapist. We're getting my care plan ready, care needs plan ready. For my NDIS plan review meeting. So I was finalising some more details and just having a chat to her about any reasonable accommodations that need to be made when I go back to work after this relapse. So my final sort of point that I'm going to make about how to prepare for your NDIS plan review meeting is... So I think that the people on your team like your care your therapists so the therapists on your team like your occupational therapist your physio you need to keep them in the loop like you always need to be in touch and letting them know how your condition is fluctuating and changing and how that's affecting your ADLs your activities of daily living and then um, I always personally choose therapists not just based on their skills um, obviously that's a big consideration but I also choose them based on the fact that they need to be able to write me some really cracking good reports for my NDIS plan review. When they write the report and they email it to me, I read through it, I double check and triple check and if, they ha if it's not to my standard, I ask for them to redo it. I also make sure that they link everything back to the goals and whether or not they've actually been achieved and if the goals have not been achieved why um, and I also get them to put in like okay so say for instance I'm asking for one hour of physio per week I need them to say look without that one hour of physio funding per week this is what's going to happen to Nina i.e her mobility will decrease this then means an additional cost to the community of increased um, risk of hospitalizations weight gain pressure sores etc etc so always reminding <coughs> the ndis which is an insurance scheme that if they don't fund this now there will be added costs in the future and and Obviously those costs need to be mitigated to keep the same scheme financially sustainable. Now, I really want to say that I hope that this vlog has been of some value. I feel like that because I'm in a relapse that um, cognitively like I'm not articulating my points as well. So kind of if you have any sort of further questions, you can always message me or, or ask in the comments section down below. But um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate your support. And um, yeah, I'll kind of leave you here. I'm just about to cross the road. So always remember, it's nothing but, oh God, still is a life worth living. It is always nothing but a really good life. Oh.